Today, we're talking to a guy at just 23 years old was able to make over $100,000 in seven months by just taking phone calls. I made just over 100K. And how old were you at the time? I was 23. He also broke down where most people think that sales is a bad thing. All it really is, is you allowing to help other people and help change their lives. There was another guy he joined a month ago and another who worked at a car dealership and they've all texted me like, dude, he changed my life. I mean, I just want to do more of that. Do you feel the fulfillment lies in changing people's lives? We're going to talk about exactly how he got to where he is. So sit back, relax, and enjoy today episode of the Remote Closing Academy podcast. Dude, before we jump too deep into it, Michael, welcome to the podcast. How's, how's the week going? Thank you, sir. Everything's been fantastic. Good, good. So, you know, dude, I know we were talking a little bit before we, we started clicking or before we click record. So let's just like dive into, you know, before you were a remote closer, before you jumped on the team, right? Let's just even bring it back. I know you said you tried a bunch of different courses and, you know, remote closing courses and stuff. But even before that, let's just let's dive into your story from back then. Sure. Yeah, man. So, I mean, high school and like school for me, um, to be honest, was not like the route. Like I literally knew in like grade seven and eight, I wasn't going to go to university because I just knew that my viewpoint was I just didn't want to learn from people who were making like 50 to 60 K a year. You know, I just didn't look at it that way. You know, I got some good examples uh, in front of me with my older brother and my, you know, my dad's very successful as well. So I always knew there was like more to life and I guess, you know, what everyone else thought. I just didn't know what it was yet. So after high school, I kind of just bounced around like, um, you know, a couple of retail jobs, a couple of restaurant jobs, stacks and cash. Um, and then eventually like just started writing because um, my brother's a copywriter and he's like, honestly, man, just start writing. Right. So I basically wrote a book, you know, on, um, you know, dating and style for guys. It's one of my passions. And um, yeah, that was basically the intro into like the Internet marketing world. And I kind of met some people and it was super interesting to kind of see I guess the success that was out there, I was like, damn, this world's like really out there, but it's like so hidden, right? It's like yeah. no one really, especially back then, this was like, I don't even know, maybe seven years ago, mm-hmm. six, seven years ago around there. And just for context, uh, how how old are you? Just so people know. Or when, so how old are you now? And then when did you kind of like find the uh, the internet world? Yeah, so I'm 24 now, born in 1999. Um, I found the internet marketing world probably like 2018, 2019. I would say around there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's when my brother really started, you know, becoming super successful. And I was like, shit, well, <laughs> if he can do it, why can't I? You yeah. know, we're from the bloodline. <laughs> uh-huh. So that's the way I looked at it. Um, I definitely knew I, you know, it's people don't like to try things and I feel like they want to, you know, find their, their passion. But, you know, when you, when you find your passion, it's not like it's just one thing, right? You have to like try different things so that you know what you don't want to do. Right. Yeah. And that's what it was for copywriting. Right. I didn't really have interest in it. Um, I really, really enjoy just communicating with people. I've been very, very fascinated with just the levels of communication there are out there and how important it is. Um, And I always knew that. Right. So as soon as I heard about remote closing, I don't remember where I heard it from. I think it was from a guy named Johnny Anton. Um, Big and I think he's decent, decently big in the space back then for remote closing. Um, And I heard about it and I just did research and I was like, damn, like this is like, you know, like this is it next you know, level like, yeah even if there's like uh, i just thought to myself like even if there's like a 0.1 percent chance that i can do this i'm I'm going for it 110 percent, right um because i just i don't know it just seemed like a perfect fit for my personality um again going back to the communication i just i really want to be a high level communicator i think it's the highest skill you can possibly have in life because i mean whether we're talking to other people we're talking to ourselves we're always talking right so yeah and Bought a course, you know, I think it was like eight grand or something like that, you know, high ticket space. I didn't really know. I was like, damn, this course is a lot, right? <laughs> like a first little, <laughs> yeah. intro, first little intro into the high ticket. I had like, I don't know, maybe a thousand bucks in my bank account, right? So basically put myself in like 7K debt to invest into the course because, um, you know, you got to you gotta do what you got to do to start. And then, yeah, just started getting intro into the industry and um, I don't know, I just found it super interesting and I just never really looked back and... It did take me a while to get my feet off the ground for sure because I didn't have connections. I was super new to the industry. I mean, people didn't really take me seriously when I was applying to jobs in the beginning. I mean, which is fair, right? It makes sense from a business standpoint. Um, But, you know, family members, people telling me like, maybe you should try something else. Like, you know, maybe it's not a good fit, blah, blah, blah. I'm just sitting here like, dude, I'm going to make this happen. You just wait, okay? Like it's it's only been a (laughs) year. It's only been a year. You know, people like... I think regular people measure things on like months or days, mm. right? I mean, I think success should be measured over periods of time, like years, right? It's more yeah. realistic sense. So yeah, 
So let's, I actually do want to just kind of go back on, on a couple of the things. Uh, so with the copywriting side, cause I, it's interesting. I mean, maybe this is just my own, like, you know, perception of it, but I've always been like terrible with English and like writing and, and all that kind of stuff, like in school. So like what, I guess, what had you interested in? So two, two questions, what had you interested in getting cop into copywriting in the first place? And then number two is do you feel like you've had like what type of skills do you think you built from the copywriting that's like lent itself and helped in the in the closing side yeah so the interest in the copywriting um i'm gonna be honest i, I don't think there was an interest there i think it was just about like starting something right mm. because i was going down a path where like you know i was at a restaurant and you know when you're at a restaurant at 19 it's fun right i mean you're working late hours you're meeting people you know the after hour drinking and going out after like it's fun Dude, but, I know that I know that realm way too well. <laughs> right. And you also know, like, I mean, you see these people here who are like 30, 40, 50 years old who's been there for 20 years. And like, you know, they, they started when they were younger. Right. So it's, mm. you know, for me, I was like, I just need to do something. I don't even really care what it is. And I just I loved just like dating and uh, the psychology of that type of like, um, I guess, topic. And then also just fashion. Like I'm super into just dressing well and different things like that. I think it's a good way to express yourself is, is style. So I just, I was like, that was more of my passion to that. And I was like, might, might as well write a book on it. And eventually one day, if I want to sell it, then it's already written. Right. So that was kind of my viewpoint on it uh, for, for that. And then I would say the skills I learned from copywriting is probably just, um, again, going back to like the proper way to communicate, just not your words, your writing. Right. You know, cause my, mm copywriting is basically closing it's just on paper right yeah so yeah yeah that's dude that's a good way and that's i assume that would, that's what the answer would be because a lot of times especially you know when we're making videos or for marketing or for ads or whatever it's all it all starts with written right i mean the yeah. scripts that we use as a yeah. closer started as writing right like mm -hmm. scripts on on like a google doc so that 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 makes sense so another part that you that you touched on was the investing aspect and putting yourself in debt. Cause I think there's a lot of people that might be listening to this that like have watched this channel before or have come across different courses or programs or whatever. And they're like, you know, I don't want to like, it's scary to invest in myself, right? It's scary to put, you know, go into debt. What was like the mindset that you went into it knowing that you were going into, into debt, but also like, how did you make all that happen? So kind of just like the mindset of, of investing in yourself. Yeah. I, I think I'm a little bit of a rare breed, but I also think like I'm a big believer in words, right? I think words are really important in life, like who you share them to, who you talk to. And I don't know, for me, it was just looking at the situation and most people would be like, oh, this is a risk, right? But I actually don't think like risk is a real word. I think people just use that to have comfort and hmm. not doing what they want to do, right? I, I actually genuinely think, I mean, as long as, you know, you're not unlucky with where you live and, you know, sick or whatever, like I think anyone can actually do whatever they want in life. Like they just have to do what they have to do, mm -hmm. right? And they have to be patient and they have to put the work in. And I just don't think people have that, right? So when when I looked at it, I was like, if I'm investing in myself and I don't think there's a possibility here where there's a bad outcome, mm. right? Because I'm going to be learning a skill. I'm investing in myself and people have no problem investing into McDonald's every day and, you know, video games and, and Netflix, like all these things. But those, those are still investments. They're just $12 a month. So it mm. seems fine, you know? So I, I always thought, I always thought, and since then I was like, investing in yourself is like the best way to do anything in life, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's a quote actually, it's called, um, if you work hard at your job, you'll make a living, but if you work hard at, on yourself, you'll make a fortune, right? And that resonated with me so much because it's like, how can you go wrong if you develop yourself? It's impossible. You're just going to become a better, more advanced human being, right? So that was, that was sort of my mindset when I was looking at the investment and um, I, I don't know, I guess, you know, Brian talks about this and like, you know, investing money, I guess, putting yourself in debt and stuff. Well, if you don't do it, then you're kind of telling your future self that you can't make this money. Right. So there's that too. That was pretty cool. That Brian said once, mm -hmm. I was like, damn, that's pretty true. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Maybe, you know, not, not going back, like, I guess too, too far, but mm -hmm. I mean, where do you think you developed this specific mindset? Because it, just the way that you're talking and obviously like you saying like, I'm going to invest in myself. And it, even when you said like risk, like you don't even believe in risk, but mm -hmm. I think that is the perception of yourself. And then also like everyone has different risk tolerances, right? Like someone that has $10,000 and spending a thousand is like much less risky than someone that has 500 that spends a thousand, right? Mm -hmm. So where, where do you feel like you kind of built this, 
mindset when you were younger to kind of like believe in yourself and know that that, that stuff's possible? Was your parents like what, like how, yeah. like where do you think that comes from? Um, I think it was parents, you know, my dad, you know, very successful dentist built two businesses from the ground up, you know, from nothing basically. Right. I think there was that too, that, you know, there's just a lot more to life. Um, and I think mm -hmm. that he was very, his biggest quote was like, um, you have to cook before you get hungry. Right. Meaning like you, you need to prepare yourself for life. Right. That's, that's mm -hmm. how it works. But I think my risk tolerance and stuff, I actually think it, some of it was from sports because my first career path was going to be a professional soccer player. Like I was playing semi-pro in Europe. I was playing semi-pro in Canada where I'm from. Right. So I guess like in that sense, I wasn't really like maybe shown all these like scary things in life because I was just doing sports mm -hmm. all the time. So I wasn't like associated with, um, you know, the nine to five and all these different things, you know, I, so I feel like that's one of the things. Another thing, again, you know, I owe a lot of success to my older brother. And I, I think that's rare because I don't know. I don't know other families, but I know a lot of people. And I know that um, there isn't many people at 29 who's as successful as he is. And that just showed me that like, you just have to like be patient and it's not about a risk. It's not about a bad decision. You just, you just have to do it, you know, and you just got to trust yourself. Like people don't trust themselves nowadays, mm -hmm. right. To get, to get the job done um, or to build the life they want, right. They're more comfortable with just living um, a safe life per se. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I think if I could take anything away from, from what you said about just like kind of, it really is just environment, right? Like, your dad had built multiple businesses and so it really like opened up your eyes to know like what's possible right mm -hmm. and i think what i want anyone that's listening to this to, to understand is like environment like you don't have to stay in the environment that you are right you can that's why i love like i've invested so much money into myself just to be in different environments where i can be around right the quote is you are the five people that you surround yourself with right so if like you're constantly you know, brought up in, in the world and, you know, your parents are always struggling. They're always saying that, you know, we need to save this amount of money or whatever. And they're living in like a scarce mindset yeah. is it is hard for those people to kind of get out of that. So, mm -hmm. you know, one of the easiest ways that I think is like listening to this podcast, listening to other podcasts, right. That, that can almost trans, you know, what's the word almost like transport them into like a different environment to help them think on, on a higher level, which it sounds like you kind of come from that mindset sports. Also like anyone yeah. that I've talked to that has been in sports is they live like, it's like, they just know anything is possible because they've already lived like working out every single day and, and, you know, mm -hmm. have been through like that, that form of hard. So, um, yeah. that, yeah. that definitely makes sense. Yeah, so what do you think? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I was going to say like touching on the environment aspect, like I live in Colombia, Medellin now, right? With my two other brothers, my older brother who runs a lot of businesses. And then my younger brother who actually runs a VSL agency with a partner down here, right? Nice. So my biggest shift was when I came down here was changing my environment, right? And I was around all these people all the time, like my two brothers, you know, the people we have coming down here. And it's, it's not even about like the influence. It's just like when you're around other people like this, like the routine of getting to where you want to be is effortless because the triggers of being back home and being in your house and having the friends are not there. So you can literally just tunnel vision and focus on exactly what you want to achieve in your life. Right. Mm -hmm. So what, what would you give, what would you give to someone as, as a piece of like recommendation or someone that doesn't have like the means to like, Oh, let me just like move to Columbia. Right. And, but then they're like living at home maybe, or, or maybe they're living with roommates. What would you suggest to someone to upgrade that environment that might not have the same means? Um, dude, I'm telling you about Columbia. It's so cheap. Like you can literally <laughs> get a place for like, like a nice place for like, I don't know, a thousand bucks a month. And mm -hmm. like, let's just say you can't afford that. Like, I would say the biggest thing to do is just kind of build your way up. And then as soon as you have it, get out. Right. Mm -hmm. That would be my advice. But Columbia is a perfect spot because there's actually just crawling with internet marketing people. It's insane. Mm -hmm. it's just super interesting. Like, you know, uh, the brand athletic greens, uh -huh. like the huge age you want, like he lives under me, the floor. Under oh, me. really? Let's right, go so knock on his door and be like, yo, you got some, you got some extra <laughs> yeah. laying around. <laughs> yeah, I, I ran out. You got, you got some in the, in the back room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's no, I, I agree, dude. I think, um, you know, it, it's funny. I recently moved to, uh, I'm living in like the middle of nowhere, Arkansas, which is, it's funny because like, you know, before I lived in, in Virginia and, you know, had like friends and, and family around and stuff, which is good, obviously. 
but it's like it's being able to kind of separate yourself from that and just like almost live in this this like grind mode in a way and you know just kind of just take out distractions so, so far to the point where like you can't even you can't even tap into it right i can't you know drive over to my brother's house to you know mess around you know what i mean um okay so i do want to you know touching on the remote closing side so you jump into a course right around remote closing so what yeah. was kind of like your your ramp up or just kind of experience in that first program mm -hmm. and what were some of the things you learned just kind of like set the stage of of where we are in the story there yeah so after i bought the course um i think the first thing i learned was that this is not what i thought sales is like at all you know i always thought sales was you know just trying to convince someone to buy something right that's mm -hmm. a general sort of view on sales so when I really started like looking at the information and understanding like, you know, there's actually like a science behind this type of closing, right? Because, you know, if you're not serving the person on the call, then you're not going to make the sale. I don't care how good you are. Mm. Right. And there's a whole like, it's like a mathematical equation, especially at RCA, as you know, with our framework and yeah. the training with Matei and Brian, like, you know how it is. Right. So it was super interesting in that aspect. And I think the biggest thing I noticed was like, it's, it didn't only like interest me in the job, but like it started like helping me in, in life, like communicating with people in general. Right. And it just, it made me just a higher level communicator, a better listener. Like the biggest lesson I've learned in closing is that you need to listen to understand, not to respond. It's like the biggest thing I've learned. Mm. Right? Most people, they listen to just, okay, you said something, it's in one ear and out the other. And now I'm going to respond. I didn't even acknowledge what you said, what you said. Right. So that's probably my biggest thing. Um, that I learned with the course, um, ramping up into like the jobs and stuff. I just got burned a few times by a few people, but eventually landed Kino body. I don't know if you know, Greg O'Gallagher, mm -hmm. you know, big guy on Instagram with fitness. It was an interesting scenario, how it all played out. Just literally one day out of nowhere, you know, I saw Bridger's story, Bridger Rogers, and I messaged him and I was like, yo, um, you know, I've been training. I'm looking for, you know, an offer. Like, is there anything? And he was like, yeah, we're literally releasing, a high take a kino body offer like at that moment and i was like damn got on the phone nice. with him like, literally five minutes later and yeah it was the first guy he hired for that offer and it was cool because i didn't only get a side of like closing and sales training but i also got a chance to learn how to build an offer right so there was kind of two two lessons there mm. um yeah the kino body was interesting because i've you know i've been a fan of greg since i was like maybe 13 or 14 because he's in toronto yeah. right I, I met him at a bar like you know a long time ago took a picture with him like and now i'm working for him it's it was it was yeah. super yeah super synergistic you know yeah well dude yeah. two two things that you that you mentioned you know when it comes to just like it's kind of in the same thing of just like building different skill sets right i think like the uh, another big thing that i want people to always understand about like remote closing is the words remote closing is something that we put to this so that people, so it's like a unique mechanism, right? As we call it in marketing. And it's not in the same realm of like drop shipping, Amazon FBA, affiliate marketing. Like if you, like any of those other like business models, it's like if the the thing, right? Let's say Amazon, for example, let's say it goes down, right? You're, you're screwed, right? You, you can't make money anymore because it's on Amazon. But with remote closing, back to what you said is like, if you learn sales mm -hmm. is it's like an extremely high, you know, leverage skills where not only can you like do sales, right. From, from like a money-making standpoint, but it's also just communication, right? Like you need communication to be able to get what you want in the world. Right. Yeah. And like, I, I can't, you tell me, I can't tell you how many times, you know, I'll be on a call with like, you know, someone that is a little bit younger or, or just people in general, and they just don't know how to like hold down a conversation. And it's just like the most like awkward things sometimes. And it's like, I almost like, it's like pulling teeth, trying to get people to like talk. And I'm like, mm -hmm. why did you not like, everyone just needs to have a basic understanding of communication. So that's number one. Uh, the second thing that you mentioned is how you were able to learn like, you know, different skills, like the different skills in working with Kinobody in the sense of like, yeah, you're learning closing and you're making money, but you're also like seeing the internals of how a yeah. successful high ticket business works. And then not only does that like help you build out your skills of like, okay, maybe some down the, sometime down the road, you want to start your own offer. It's like yeah. you have those skill sets you need in, in order to, to see success with that, you know? Yeah, 100%. Um, even going back, because I even forgot to say this, but going back to like the skill of just communication in general, I actually developed at like a very young age because from two, two things, one of them is pretty funny. But the first one was, you know, when I was younger, I used to go to my dad's office all the time, right? the dentistry office, just kind of sit around, chill. 
but there was this like little lobby in an office or there was an office and then there was the lobby and there was like a window, right. That looked into the lobby that you couldn't see in, but you could see out. Right. So I used to like sit there and just watch my dad, like talk to his patients and like his body language. He was always staring them in the eye, you know, body was facing them, like all these communication things that was just like super intriguing to me. And I just like studied it from such a young age. So that's one of the things that really helped me. Um, the other one is honestly arguing with my parents so much, <laughs> like negotiating. <laughs> Swear to God, man. Um, and I didn't even notice this. Debating my... with your parents. <laughs> and it's so funny because it's so true, right? Like when I was in high school, I was a little bit of like a, you know, I went out a lot and disobeyed, blah, 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 right? At that yeah, age, yeah. you're changing. Um, but I was always negotiating with my parents because they're, you know, they're European, traditional, you know, they didn't want me to go out as much but i was always negotiating with them to like you know close them basically on letting them go to my friend's house or go out you know i even wrote up a contract once and like sat my dad down and closed them on yeah you're tape. closing your parents <laughs> as a teenager you're you were meant for this <laughs> you're meant no, for this world bro <laughs> i literally had a contract and i wrote everything and i sat him down and i closed them on him letting him drive his audi in grade 12 to school oh it was so man but those skills were developed, and I think that's why I excelled so quickly on Kino Body, because um, I did. I think I, I was about eight hundred k cash, one point five million in in seven months. For my first closing. Jeez. Gig. What is uh, so for people that are listening? What does that translate in in commissions? Yeah, so ten percent plus bonuses, right? In the first seven months of closing, so I, I made just over a hundred k from that. Not from that bad, first. bro. 100k in seven months it's not how, bad. And, was, and how old were you at the time sorry uh i was 23 20 yeah 23 yeah can't beat it bro there you go so so what so you're in okay so let's back to the story side if, if you're you're with kino body i guess what are some of the you know what are some of the key things that you feel like you learned being that was like from you know if i if i heard you correctly that was like the first like real offer that you were on. Yeah. I think you said you got burned like by by some others. But what were yeah. some of like the key takeaways from like being in an offer that was, you know, as as high, you know, as as well known as as Kino Body? Yeah. Um in the beginning I struggled a little bit because I was trying to just follow the script, right? And there's nothing wrong with following a script, but if you want to be a really good closer, you need to have multiple personalities. You need to be able to adapt to the person on the call. Right. And, and, you know, match their energy, you know, be able to talk to them in a certain way. And that's, that was the first shift I made um, into actually starting to close deals. And then the next thing um, was conviction. Uh, like I was beating out a closer that was, you know, a close, I had already been closing for like seven years and I was beating him by over a hundred K cash collected a month. Hmm. Right. And that's literally because my conviction for Greg's brand was through the roof. Like I believe in Kino body. I still, I'm literally wearing his shirt right now. This is his shirt. <laughs> Um, I just believed in it so much. It also helped me get in good shape. Like, and uh, when you're in good shape, everything else is better. That's just how life works. Like, mm. I don't care what anything says, right? Um, but my conviction was so high, and I just, you know, when your conviction is super, super locked in on an offer, the conversation is natural and it flows so well, right? We talk about call flow all the time on RCA. It's one of the biggest things to to mm. to have on the call and. I just think conviction um, will always, you know, beat out even someone who's got 20 years of sales experience, right? Because your your um, your belief in what you're selling just kind of transfers through the through the Zoom and to the person, and then they start believing it, right? So mm -hmm. I think that was definitely one of the biggest. What would you say? Like, what would you give to someone as a tip to like how to build conviction? Because for you, obviously, it was like you you were following the brand for a long time. You, un yeah. you know, understood what you could do. Like, how how does someone build conviction? Yeah, a good example, honestly, is like right now because I'm working for RCA, right? I'm basically selling my life, right? Mm. So I think, again, going back to environment and living, again, if you don't have a, you know enough money or whatever, Columbia is a great spot because you can live pretty much like a king for a lot cheaper. But as soon as I actually changed apartments here to a really like a lot, a lot nicer place, like I'm now the top closer uh, in this month. Right. Mm. And that conviction is like, because I'm literally waking up every day and living this type of life, like I'm living what I'm selling, like genuinely speaking mm. every day, I embody a remote closer. Right. So I think the best way to create conviction is to a hundred percent, just with everything inside of you, just do whatever the program is. Right. So if the mm. program is like Kino body, like follow Kino body to the T for the first little bit. 
because then you'll start seeing results and then you'll be like, damn, I really got to get someone on this. Cause like, look at me, you know, same with RCA. RCA is the same thing. You got to live the lifestyle you're selling. And look, if it's a good lifestyle and you really love your lifestyle, it's going to show through the phone. Hey, what's going on, Aaron here, popping into the episode super quickly here. So whether you're watching on YouTube or over on the podcast apps, all you know, Spotify, Apple, those types of things is down in the description below or in the show notes on the podcast apps is going to be a video over to a step-by-step -step training video on exactly how to get started with remote closing. So obviously you're watching and listening to the episode. Now, after this training, make sure to bookmark and click that link down below so you can go and see exactly exactly step-by-step -step how to get started with remote closing and start making money by taking phone calls. So back to the episode. Yeah, dude, that's a, that's a great, a great tip for, for anyone. And you know, we talk about this all the time of like how, how, like there's literally an offer for everything, right? There's, there's yeah. offers for weight loss. There's offers for making money. There's offers for divorce counseling. There's offers for relationship. There's offers for spirituality. There's offers for like, if you think about it, there was, um, I saw this this ad for whatever reason for like a jump rope course the other day mm -hmm. and like a paddleboard course. And it's like, if yeah. you can think about whatever it is, like, like you said, if you can just live whatever it is. And obviously like, if you can pick an offer, that's something you've already like done in the past too. Like it doesn't necessarily have to be like, like you said, right. Go through Kino Body's course. But if it was like, you were able to lose a certain amount of weight in a certain amount of time right? Like yeah. that, that gives you a little bit of passion and conviction behind, okay, losing weight through a system is possible. And then you can go down the, you know, the rabbit hole a little bit more, but you know, there's, there's a ton of different ways to, to, yeah. to build that, that type of conviction. hundred percent agree. Yeah. So let's go to the next step. So you're in Kino body mm -hmm. and then, so how did you transition into like, was it, was it from Kino body into RCA or what was like the transition between, between those two? Yeah. So Basically the Kino body offer had like a really good stretch for like, I think it was about a year, a year and a bit where we're just crushing it. Um, but it just kind of fell through, you know, sometimes it happens with offers. It has like a really good run for like a year or whatever. And then it just falls through. Mm -hmm. Right. So as that was happening, I, you know, transitioned out and, you know, I sat Greg down and I was like, honestly, like I gotta, I gotta move into something else. Like I honestly did want to at that point as well. I wanted to explore other fields, see what, you know, what else is out there as far as the remote closing sort of industry. So basically my next offer was, um, an AI offer. So it was like a called digital dad, basically helping dads, you know, create an offer online. Right. Um, it was okay. I mean, I didn't make much money from it, to be honest, it was more of a startup offer. Um, so it was kind of like just staying like kind of, I guess in the industry a little bit, I didn't want to like stop closing for a bit and get out of the rhythm and stuff. So yeah. I just tried to get on anything and just, you know, be with the team, have the morning meetings, do whatever. Right to stay in rhythm. Um, and then, you know, I moved down here and then I hit up Dan Lazario, right? The STA closer, yeah. top of the month this month as well. Good for, um, love that for him. He's super badass. Um, but I messaged him and cause he lives here too, right? And I was like, yo, are there any openings with like, you know, RCA or Cole's team? Like, you know, everyone knows that Cole is the top guy in high ticket closing. Like there's no better training. There's no better anything, right? He's the guy. Um, so I hit him up and he was just like, yeah, I'll funnel you through, you know, through to closers.io and basically just hopped on, uh, that got interviewed by Viv, I think. And then she funneled me through to Brian and, um, we had like a group interview and he texted me like in the middle of the zoom. He's like, yo, let's, let's go on a next meeting, which was cool. And then, you know, I started basically, I started December like 10th. Um, and you know, it's been definitely the best experience by far in remote closing, not even close. Yeah. Why, why do you, why do you say that is, or why do you think that is? Um, I, I think one of the biggest things is like the culture of RCA is like insane. Like I love Mate. I think he's like one of the best leaders um, I've ever like learned from in anything, never mind just closing like his, you know how he is. Like he, the way he talks is, is, you know, I want to talk like him. Like he's just, mm -hmm. he always says the right thing. He's super educated. Um, so he's really cool. And just, I don't know, you know, the morning meetings, we get on, we share wins, like all these different things are just super cool. And it just, it's like a really good way to just like do it every, like do that every day. It just helps, you know, with the positivity and staying on track and being in this, you know, type of environment, going back to that, it just helps a lot. And, you know, the people, everyone's super organized. Everyone's got their job. Everyone's really good at it. Right. Some of the other offers I worked for, it was pretty disorganized. Right. Mm. If anything, RCA and Cole, everything is super fucking organized. Like, <laughs> so organized, especially on Slack. It's insane. Yeah. Um, 
there's that. And just again, um, from December till now, I've changed quite a bit, uh, personally in development and all this stuff. Um, and the biggest thing that I was talking to Mate about this the other day, the biggest thing I've actually developed personally from RCH trainings and stuff is self-awareness. My self-awareness is like through the roof. Like whenever I have like a negative thought or a negative act or don't want to get up and go to the gym, I'm catching myself right away and I'm changing. Mm -hmm. And I think that skill is, is I talk about it a lot on my calls now, because I think self-awareness is probably one of the most important internal things that you can have control over um, and learn. What was the switch for that? Cause it, it's kind of meta, right? It's like self-awareness you need mm -hmm. to be aware that you're not self-aware yeah. to work on self-awareness, right? So like, what what was the switch for you to like be, okay, okay, here's how I catch myself. Here's like, was there anything that you did specifically? Um, I don't, I don't think it was anything specifically. I honestly just think the amount of like just high level communication training I was getting and just being on six, seven calls a day, talking to people, coaching them, leading them, you know, like discovering why they're not where they want to be. I don't know. I just kind of clicked. I was just like noticing myself, like catch myself in these bad thoughts or bad behaviors or, or old habits or anything like that. Right. And I think like, just again, going back to remote closing, and I personally think it's the highest level skill you can possibly learn. Cause like you mentioned before, you know, at the end of the day, sales isn't everything, but like, you know, e-commerce, all those other things are not in sales. Right. So closing mm -hmm. is literally everything, whether you're closing yourself or closing other people, it's in everything. So I think like just the skill itself is not only, again, going, communicating with people, it's communicating with yourself properly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One, one thing I'll add just, you know, to give, cause that, that was a good answer in terms of the self-awareness. One thing that's worked really well for me is for example, if it's like, like you said, whenever you feel yourself almost making a decision, that's not the best for you is calling yourself out on that. And I think yeah. where a lot of people live in is they they know, for example, they wake up, they tell themselves, oh, I'm gonna go to the gym, and they don't go to the gym because no one's holding them accountable. Yeah. But what happens is like when you can make that switch of, okay, I don't wanna go to the gym, but I know that I should, I know that I need to, making that decision, not only, like we said, right, builds a self-awareness, but it also builds the self-confidence. I, I learned this from Brian, you know, I've, I've known Brian yeah. since like 2017, 2018. You know, I, I remember asking him on like a group call a long time ago in one of his first offers, because he would always talk about confidence and, and conviction. I'm like, dude, how do you like build self-confidence? And he's like, you just do the things that you tell yourself you're gonna do, right? So if you say you're gonna wake up at 6 a.m., you wake up at 6 a.m., not because someone else is gonna call you out on it, but because you're huh. calling yourself out on it, you know? Yeah, hundred percent. And I didn't even think about that, but that's one thing I, I literally do this every morning. It's say do ratio, right? Mm -hmm. And what that is at the end of the day. And Basically, I write down like, and people think like when I tell them it has to be like the craziest task, it's incorrect. It has to be like the smallest task. So there's, mm -hmm. those are the ones that you can easily tell yourself not to do, right? Because it's like, oh, it doesn't matter, you know? So I'll yeah. write down, you know, make my bed, uh, go to the gym and, you know, clean up my, my dish after I eat my food, right? Very small things, right? And do my EOD on time and all these, maybe like those four things basically every morning. And then at the end of the day, I sit down and I, I answer to myself. I said, dude, I do this. Like, did I commit to myself? And that's where true self-confidence is built. There's no higher level of self-confidence when you keep your word to yourself. And you can only know that until you experience it. I, I don't care what anyone says. That's the highest level of self-confidence. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then you rate it at the end of the day. And you be honest with yourself. Like out of 10, did I do, was I 100%, you know, safety ratio was what? 7 out of 10, 10 out of 10, 4 out of 10. And you can't lie. You got to be honest with yourself. So it's a really, really cool drill that just helps a lot with self-awareness. It helps a lot with um, confidence and you just feel good at the end of the day. Like if you, you know, said what you were going to do, it's like, damn, I did it. You know? Yeah. So up to this point, we've talked, uh, we've talked a lot about, you know, I feel like it's been like Michael's win one in this way. It's like, win, win, win. Where is like, you know, in, in jumping into RCA, what was like your ramp up period? Was there ever a point where, you didn't really hit the numbers that you wanted to just something. So someone can see kind of the opposite realm of, you know, maybe not everything is, is butterflies and rainbows. No, it definitely isn't. And you know, there's a lot of background work as, a, as you know, right. That people don't see in the industry. People just see the videos and they see all these things, but there's a lot of work. Like I, I'm, you know, I work 12 hours a day, every day, you know, Monday to Saturday. Um, 
you know, it's not all sunshine and rainbows, but in the beginning it was a little bit tough because with RCA, like my first month um, was pretty tough because I don't know, it was pretty intimidating to be honest, to work for Cole. Like I was like, damn, like this is, mm. this is some big boy shit. You know, it's not like a small offer anymore um, or anything like that. So it was a little bit of intimidating um, learning like the level of, of framework that RCA has and like just the amount of detail that goes into every word you say and all these things, right? I didn't, again, I wasn't, I didn't get much closer training, right? I just had more just experience deals for Kino body. That was pretty much all of it. So getting used to just those proper ways of going about calls and discovery and goals and, you know, current situation and time check and all these different things. I just, I wasn't super aware of, right? Um, so that was probably the biggest learning curve for me um, in the beginning. You know, I still did decent my first month. I, you know, collected 50K, which is pretty good for your first month as a as a closer on a new offer. And then um, January was, you know, the first half of the month. I think I had like, not even the first half. It was like a week before the month was done. I had like 16K cash collect. And I was like, what is going on? Yeah. I'm doing <laughs> call reviews every morning. You know, I'm doing everything right. And just... The lesson was you got to just be patient and don't expect things to come to you. And then, you know, the, a week later, I finished with like 60K cash in a mm. week. Right. So it's like you just have, and that's part of the sales game as well as you can. And I told this to the setters a lot, a lot is you have to have a short memory, right? You can't get on a call and do everything right. And then, you know, this person just doesn't buy because they're too scared or they can't get over their belief system. And then you get in your head about it. Can't do that. We know, we all know there's so many people to talk to. There's endless people to talk to. You just, you got to review it, see what you did wrong, see what you did good, get to the next call. Don't dwell on it because then that starts affecting the rest of your day. How do you disconnect from the outcome? It's very difficult and I still work on it on a daily basis, right? Um, but I think if you, a good way to look at it is if you really just give your all on that call, um, and it didn't work, then you just got to, that's, you got to have a frame of like, it's per, that's, the, that's the person's loss, right? It's mm -hmm. their loss. They're not joining, not yours. Right. I think that's a good way to look at it, but it is yeah. a very difficult thing to, you know, forget when you're like, Oh, you're so close. Like it's, oh, yeah. it's going to pick, it's going to piff. And then it's like, Oh, yeah. he leaves the call, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's like, Oh, credit card number first four leave zoom. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And like, you know, it's, it's, I, I firmly believe everything in life is a mental game. So, mm. yeah, one, one thing that's helped, helped me a lot when I was, uh, you know, actively doing calls was just understanding that it, it just as cliche as it sounds, right. It's, it's all a numbers game. And yeah. I mean, that's what you said, right. It's like, it's, it's a numbers game and like, there's going to be people that inevitably will move forward as long as you have enough calls. But I think it's just that, that scarcity versus abundance where, okay, if I'm, if I'm feeling too connected to the outcome, it's because I don't have enough opportunity. So how do I increase opportunity? Whether that's like doing my own follow-up, doing my own outreach, right? Making sure that there is enough opportunity to reach the amount of numbers we need in order to, you know, inevitably close deals. That's just something that, that helps me out a ton. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So that was the kind of the buildup. So I, you know, I know we're, we're limited on time because the closer life, Michael has a call at the top of the hour. So we got to, you know, try to put as much as we can into it. So this month you, you know, we're halfway through, or was the, was the record was, was all of last month, right? That you hit most cash collected or what was the, yeah. yeah. Sure, yeah. Okay, perfect. So what are like some of the things that you feel like maybe are two or three things that allowed you to be on top of the team? We have five closers. Yeah. Okay. So top of the five closers, what were two to the three things that you think attributed to you being the top closer? Um, I think one of them was, um, like putting my ego aside and study Jared's calls. Cause Jared is for me, he's like, really, like, he's really good. I really like his like aggression on the calls, but not in like a bad way. Mm -hmm. I really like his confidence. Like he's got the most confidence. Like he had a call the other day where the guy was like, why? And he was like, I can charge you 20 K if you want. <laughs> I was like, that's a, <laughs> you know, I, oh, that's shit. a level of confidence. And the guy was like, never mind, We'll just, you know? That's a level of confidence yeah. that um, I think helped me. I mean, I've watched all his calls, you know, four or five times each. Right. So that helped definitely. And, you know, making my own sort of version of it, you know, because I can't just copy him. I got to, you know, have my own sort of authentic, authentic, authenticness to it. Yeah. Um, but I think that was one thing is just humbling myself and like continuing to just learn the skill and know that there's so many things I don't know. Um, I would say another thing is 
my Sadie ratio this month has been like a hundred percent every day, seven There days you a go, week. baby. Every day I did exactly what I was going to set out. I said I was going to do, I, you know, I'm on carnivore diet right now. I'm trying it out. I haven't broken once. Just all these things are really aligned and I'm super, super focused. I'm not letting myself go in any way, in any shape or form. So I think that really helped with just my focus on the calls and being able to stay present. Cause I think that that's huge for closers is you really have to stay present because if you focus on the outcome or you focus on what you're saying, it's, it's not going to be natural and then you won't make the sale. Right. So I think my pre I mean, being present on the calls was, was huge. Um, and then the other thing was I changed environments, bro. I mean, I, I got like a really nice place and I started just really living this life to the max. And I, you know, Brian told me to do it and I was like, fuck it. I mean, whatever, <laughs> might as well try it. You know, yeah. like Brian's always right. So, yeah, <laughs> we exactly. <know> that. <laughs> um, so I basically upgraded my pad and, and, um, my conviction is just super high right now. You know, it's just, I really believe that this job is the best on the planet. And I believe that it's the highest level of skill you can possibly learn because it's one of those jobs that doesn't only apply to the job, right? I mean, it applies to relationships, how you treat people, how you listen to people, how you answer people. It's everything, right? And I just, for me, my conviction has just been extremely high this month. And I, I don't know, I don't see it going down anytime soon. So there you go, man. We're, we're going to see you top, top of the leaderboards the next couple of months. That's what's um what are some of your goals like I, I usually don't you know ask you know goal questions you mostly just because a lot of it's just around like you know the person's story and stuff but like specifically you like what are what are some of your goals that you have set out for yourself over the next like three to six months yeah so i have like a, only really a couple goals or really three goals my, my first one would would be like fitness and stuff like i do i do want to get down to like eight percent for the summer i'm sitting around 10 to Jeez. 11 right but my sister's wedding is in Greece this summer. And I, you know, I want to look good. I want to be, you know, I envision myself being a certain person for that wedding. So fitness wise, I, I do want to get down to that. Um, I think it, you know, it's a good discipline test because at this point, you know, being lean already, it's, you know, the fat loss is a lot slower. So you have to be patient and you have to just every day be present and just do what you have to do. Don't worry about the outcome. So I think that's one of the things. Um, the next one is, is obviously, you know, um, upping the income, you know, getting better, helping more people join RCA and change their life. Like I've had a few people in the last three weeks, um, maybe like, I think I was a 19 year old, I actually closed his mom on the phone with him. Super funny. Oh um, yeah, she, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah there's that. There was another guy, uh, Sam Konzan, like he joined a month ago and another 19 year old who worked at a car dealership and they've all texted me like, dude, this is insane. Like you changed my life. Like I'm super happy I joined. And I mean, I just want to do more of that. Um, you know, money is a healthy consequence. Obviously I do feel the fulfillment lies in, in changing people's lives. Cause as a closer, I mean, you know, we're in sales, but I do genuinely think we're more coaches than, than salespeople, right. Where we really just change people's beliefs and get them out of their own way. Right. That's really what the job is. Help them lead them. Right. Don't tell them you got to lead them. So I think that's one thing. Um, and then the next one is just becoming the apps like it's just soaking in every possible angle of knowledge in closing like i'm I'm still you know i feel like i have so much to grow still so i want to pick apart brian's brain as much as possible Matej, you know jacob jared like now all these all these people i really just want to be like you know by let's just say the end of the summer like the most educated closer mm. like possible for me not for anyone else i'd say yeah. those are my three goals for sure yeah, I think huge, huge part that you talked about that I think it's it's hard to articulate when you haven't like lived in that spot. But it's it's the the whole cliche of like money doesn't buy happiness. It's like to a certain extent, once you have like all your bills paid and your debts paid and like that type of thing, it's almost like you you have to to stay more like to stay consistent, you have to find external motivations, right? And it becomes like that, like, okay. I'm making X amount of dollars. Now I need to like, my motivation is how do I become the best, right? right. Motivation is, you know, some of these, these other non-monetary goals to keep yourself, you know, mm -hmm. striving for the next and the next and the next. I think that's, I think that's huge. Yeah, hundred percent. At this point, it's definitely not about the money because I know that I have a skill set that will now, you know, I'll never be out of money. Let's just say that because the skill set mm -hmm. is so high and it's, it's leveraged in so many different areas. Right now it's just about, really becoming the best possible closer and the most educated so that I can, you know, help more people, you know, live this life. It's if it's something they want to do. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So last last couple of questions here. So what would you say to someone that is, you know, kind of like we talked about earlier in that realm of, you know, I don't know if like I'm scared to invest myself. Like, I don't know if this is going to yeah. work. So someone that's that's watching this and they're like, I just I just don't know if this is going to work for me. What would you say to them? Yeah, I think a good I think a good drill um, to do when you're scared of investing in yourself or just have that scarcity mindset to take the risk. Right. Is to sit down with yourself and have a genuine conversation. Right. I think people don't spend enough time with themselves to understand themselves. Right. I think people are very uncomfortable spending time alone with themselves because they don't like themselves. Right. So I think sitting down and just a side note, but I actually do this every Monday. It's called the Solomon paradox. Right. What it means is you give better advice to other people than you do yourself naturally. Right. Like you can look at it from an outside perspective. So every Monday I sit down with myself on a text message conversation. And one of me is text texting and I text myself at 24. And then I answer, but at 85 and I answer in like, who do I want to be when I'm 85? Right. So I'm answering myself in the sense of like how I want to live my life over the next 60 years. Cause that person, you know, they're at the end of their life. They want everything. They want everything done. So I think like not a drill wise for that, but I think like just sitting down and asking yourself, like, is this risk more of like, I'm scared to do this because I don't know if it's going to you know, be a reality for myself or is it just nothing, you know? Like you just really need to ask yourself good questions that so you can get a clear understanding on why you don't want to get to where you, you know, want to be, let's say, right? Because people who join RCA and get on the phone, they're obviously not happy, right? No one's going to click an ad if they are satisfied with their life, right? So if you're scared to make an investment or whatever, well, that mindset is exactly why you are where you are right now. So that's probably the best way to look at it. Yeah. And then last one, well, I do have one after this, but it'll, it'll sure. kind of be a little wrap up. But so what would you say to someone that, so they, they understand that, right? They get, okay, cool. I should like, I know I need to trust myself. I need to invest in myself, things like that. Yeah. But they were just like right on the cusp. They're right on the edge, on the fence. What would you say to them to get them over the fence and be like, okay, you need to jump into RCA? Do it. There's nothing else to do, man. I do it all the time on my calls when people are, you know, fidgety and they're, you know, they're like, oh, I don't know. Like, you know, they have the card and I'm like, dude, I mean, what are you waiting for? Like, how much longer are you going to wait to start living the life that you want to live? Like, aren't you tired of like being unhappy every day? You know, aren't you tired of not providing for your family? Aren't you tired of like not being the best version of yourself? Right. There is no like, there's no like, like people think there's like a secret sauce to this type of success. There really isn't, you know, it's, you just have to do it. Like you just have to like take the leap forward, you know, get out of your own head and just do it because the worst case scenario, especially with RCA is that you learn a new skill. And if it's any other opportunity, it's very dangerous to say no to an opportunity that you think will benefit you because then you create a habit in your brain or I'm going to say no to opportunities that are good for me. Mm. Right. So that's really, that's like a really bad mindset because everything is habits and patterns, right? So if you constantly say no to things, then that's the way your life is going to be. So I think it's, there's no secret sauce. There's no like special closer thing. It's like, bro, you just have to do it, you know, trust the process, you know, give a little faith in yourself and just do it. So that's what I would say. Sweet. All right. So we're the last thing here. Uh, what I want you to do, I'm going to do like an outro really quickly for like 30 seconds. What I want you to think of is just last words for someone that's watching this. It could be motivation. It could be a tip. It could be about closing, whatever you think. Just think about it for 30 seconds, something that someone needs to take away. And I'll do this outro super quick. So for those of you that are watching up to this point, you've obviously, I mean, we've been talking for like an hour here. So you're somewhat interested in what remote closing is, what appointment setting is. And you might be thinking like, I need something else in my life. So if that's you, what I want you to do is down below in the description on YouTube and in the show notes on the podcast app, there's a link to a video. It's about 15 minutes long. I put it together and really what it's going to do is, is condense all of what remote closing is in like, again, a 15 minute video. And you should be able to leave that video with an understanding of what remote closing is and how you can implement some of the tactics that we use to get started yourself. Now, full transparency towards the end of that video, there is an option to book a call with us. You might be able to talk with Michael here and uh, kind of give you, uh, you know, a background of what would this look like if you were to implement this within your life and going over some of the goals, things like that. Uh, Michael could tell you as well, we talked about it through this, is we, we don't do hard pressure sales. It's just literally conversation. Can we help you? Cool, if we can, we'll talk about what that looks like. If not, then obviously we'll point you in the right direction. So down in the description on YouTube, as well as the show notes on the podcast app. So that being said, last words for the wonderful people. 
Yeah, I think um, a good thing that I've learned and something for people to take into factor um, is to stop living life in the future. You know, I think being present is the biggest thing you can, biggest gift you can give yourself um, because we can't control the future. The past already happened. I think it's really important to stay present. And when you focus on all these external things, you just get scared and you don't move forward, right? And I have a quote on my phone. I can even show it as proof, right? Got it right here. Hey, there it is. The man who likes walking will ultimately walk further than the man who likes the destination, right? So that being said, just focus on every day. You know, I think a good, really people live life in two ways, one day or day one, right? So they'll say one day, well, I'm going to do it. And they're 75. I think if you just tell yourself one day and every day it's one day, you'll get to where you want to be. And that would be my biggest, biggest advice and take home. There you go, man. Well, I know you got to jump on a call here shortly. So thank you so much sure. for jumping on. Those of you that are watching this, leave a comment down below what you thought of the episode overall. I, I'm trying this new setup. The camera's over here. Let us know what you think down in the comments below and also leave a like if you enjoyed this. Click the link down in the description if you want to check out that video. We'll see you guys on the next episode. Talk soon. Peace.